Space is a truly mysterious and attractive place, but at the same time, it is filled with some grave threats and dangers, extreme temperatures, lethal radiation and a harsh environment are a threat to any living being that would dare leave its native planet. But even against this generally unfriendly background, there are still especially dangerous and scary places that particularly stand out. Let's check out the most horrifying ones. Earlier, in one of our previous videos, we have already taken a look at some terrifying and lethally dangerous worlds discovered in the vast expanses of space. With some of them extremely hot, others are located close to insanely powerful sources of radiation, and yet other ones are peculiar for some bizarre features on their surfaces. However, we haven't quite exhausted our list of the most horrifying planets, and now it's time to see some more. Our first stop is 202 light years away from the Earth, destination K2-141, an orange dwarf. Its mass is roughly 0.7 that of the Sun, and its radius measures 68% that of our host star. With these parameters almost perfectly proportional, the star's temperature reaches 4600 Kelvin, which is about 20% less than that of the Sun. And now to the planet in question. Just 0.007 astronomical units away from its star, there lies a really bizarre world. Designation K2-141b. This rocky exoplanet is five times as massive as the Earth, with its radius 1.5 times as big as that of our Earth. All this gives us grounds to assume that the gravity on the planet's surface is at least twice as strong as that on our planet. The heavy metallic core, meanwhile, accounts for 20 to 50% of the planet's overall mass. It takes the celestial body about six and a half hours to complete a full orbit around its parent star. Being extremely close, it is tidally locked to it. That is, it faces the star with one and the same side at all times. Observations show that the temperature on the planet's day side reaches 3270 Kelvin or 3000 degrees Celsius. This is enough not only to melt most rocks and metals, but also to effectively evaporate them. The day side of the planet is assumed to be covered with a lava ocean that never ceases to boil. The atmosphere is thought to be rather exotic, made up of steams of heavy metals and silicates. By contrast, the planet's night side is incredibly freezing, according to estimates, the temperature of most of its area is tens of times lower than that on the day side and on balance its values are supposed to be sub-zero. Mathematical modeling shows that this sharp temperature contrast gives rise to exceptionally strong winds whose speed reaches 1.75 km per second. This is roughly five times the speed of sound, which means that the surface of K2-141b is continuously shaken by exceptionally powerful, deafening rumbling. It is assumed that on reaching the night side, atmospheric streams condense and precipitate on its surface in the form of fiery rain. This forms lava rivers, and eventually this molten metal makes its way back into a magma ocean to evaporate again later on and to continue this incredible, fiery circulation. However, this infernal cycle affects only a relatively small part of the planet's night side. The thing is that masses of evaporated elements from the day side simply don't make it to the main part of the night side and precipitate somewhere on the border. That is why the central part of the night side is likely to be a freezing desert bound with layers of solid rocks. Remarkably, K2-141b is far from being the hottest planet that we know of. For example, there is an object referred to as Kelt 9b lying 670 light years away from the Earth. Its surface is as hot as 4600 Kelvin, which is approximately 4330 degrees Celsius. Just to compare, the outer layers of almost all red dwarves, for example, are much cooler, which means that in terms of temperature, 
this exoplanet is quite a match to stars. Its parent star, designation Kelp 9, is of a whitish-blue color and has a mass 2.6 times that of the Sun. As for its diameter, it is 2.3 times that of our star. The surface temperature of Kelp 9 is rather high at approximately 10,170 Kelvin or a staggering 9,900 degrees Celsius. This largely accounts for the extreme conditions on Kelp 9b, which lies quite close by. Just 0.035 astronomical units away from its parent star, the planet completes a full orbit around its system's center roughly every one and a half days. Kelt 9b is a hot gas giant. Compared to Jupiter, its mass is 2.8 times as big and its radius measures roughly twice as much as that of the largest planet in our system. Based on today's notions about the composition of this type of planets, the inner part of Kelt 9b's atmosphere is supposed to be even hotter. Estimates allow for this value to reach as much as 11,000 Kelvin on account of heavy metal ionization. With this figure so exceptionally big, it appears that the planet's atmosphere should contain vaporized iron and titanium, alongside the elements we're used to in an atmosphere's composition such as hydrogen or helium. Its close proximity to the parent star and the extremely high temperature cause the planet to gradually lose its atmosphere. By and by, powerful stellar wind blows it off into space, which is why the object is shrouded in a cloud of rarefied gas. This material will eventually be attracted and absorbed by the star. Interestingly, according to some estimates, the exoplanet loses up to 68 Earth masses every billion years. Theoretically, in a long while, Kelt 9b may well get stripped of all of its atmosphere and transform itself into a Thonian planet. However, its parent star is likely to hit the final stage of its life cycle long before that, swallowing up and destroying all the celestial objects within its reach. The space objects we have just looked at are a living proof, as it were, of the fact that stars can destroy the planets close to them and not just warm them up. But incidentally, there are celestial objects out there in the universe that have experienced their parent star's wrath in full measure. One of such objects lies 4,570 light years away from the Earth in the environs of a small star, designation V391 Pegasi. Now, the star is a white dwarf whose mass is twice as little as that of the Sun and whose radius is approximately 23% that of our parent star. The temperature of this celestial object is unbelievably high, at almost 30,000 Kelvin. All thermonuclear reactions in its interior would have run their course a long while ago. Up ahead are hundreds of billions of years of slow cooling, with the white dwarf eventually transforming into a black one. The planet we will look at, referred to as V391 Pegasi b, is in this ordinary star's environs. Its lot is exceptionally amazing. According to mathematical modeling, the planet not only survived its progenitor star shedding its outer layers, but actually found itself almost within the star for some time. It is assumed that when the system's star V391 Pegasi transformed into a red giant, its outer layers extremely rarefied by then, were almost brushing the planet's orbit. Their density became dozens of times lower than the atmospheric air we're used to, which means that the celestial objects devoured by the dying star remained whole for a while and didn't get destroyed at once. It goes without saying that they would have been losing their speed and dropped into the star's hotter and denser layers. Still, V391 Pegasi shed its outer layers sooner than V391 Pegasi b melted and ceased to exist as a whole object. At the moment, the exoplanet appears to be a gas giant, three times as massive as Jupiter. Its orbit passes 1.7 astronomical units away from its parent star, and it takes the planet approximately 1,170 Earth days to complete a full orbit around its system center. It is still not entirely clear how this astronomical body managed to preserve such a big mass after its collision with the scorching hot layers of the star. Their influence was supposed to have destroyed the object's atmosphere completely. 
However, there is no doubt that the host star's collapse brought about some dramatic changes, both in terms of the exoplanet's orbit and its parameters. That is why it is hardly possible for us to ever find out what V391 Pegasi B was like before immersing in a sea of raging plasma. Space expanses conceal uncountable astronomical objects with the most bizarre properties. Some of them are almost totally invisible through regular telescopes, but can be detected by looking at radio wavelengths when exploring space. An example of such like celestial objects is pulsars, neutron stars spinning on their axes at a mind-boggling speed. These objects' spectra are peculiar for exceptionally fast and regular pulsations that is why it is quite easy to detect another celestial body transiting between a radiation source like that and an observer on the Earth. This is precisely the way our next object of interest was discovered. But first we'll be looking at a pulsar which lies around 4000 light years away from the Earth. This neutron star boasts quite a long name. Here it is on the screen. And now let's check out its remarkable features. The pulsar's diameter is just a measly 20 kilometers, and its mass is approximately 1.4 that of the Sun. The object spins at an incredible rate, with roughly 10,000 rotations a minute, while continuously emitting powerful electromagnetic radiation impulses. Now the surface of the exoplanet, our next object of interest, is continuously exposed to these waves of lethal radiation, which makes it a hostile and forbidding place. It takes this planet just two hours to complete a full orbit around its system's center, and the distance to the pulsar is smaller than the Sun's radius, just 600,000 kilometers or 0.004 astronomical units. Incidentally, the celestial body's surface is bound by eternal cold in space as its parent star just barely emits thermal energy. The object's mass is around 330 that of the Earth, while its radius is four times that of our planet. This makes gravity on its surface as much as 20 times stronger than on the Earth. Estimates show the planet's average density to be about 23 grams per cubic centimeter, which is more than most chemical compounds we know. The planet is thought to be made up for the most part of crystallized carbon under a lot of pressure. Besides, the object's upper layers contain some oxygen, which is probably chemically bound with carbon. It is highly doubtful that a celestial body located so close to a star could possibly have survived a supernova event. It is more realistic to assume that the exoplanet formed after the progenitor star had come to the end of its life cycle and had transformed itself into a pulsar. The exoplanet could be a piece of debris left over from a white dwarf whose material would have dispersed for the most part. This makes classifying the exoplanet an especially difficult task. Still, whatever it is, this world remains one of the most dangerous and hostile ones lurking in the depths of the cosmos. The more we learn about space, the more we appreciate the incredible diversity of astronomical objects. Perhaps there are yet more new worlds to be discovered literally just round the corner, and they may be so harsh that the lethal planets we've just seen will feel like a tropical paradise in comparison. Either way, any discovered celestial object, be it a star, planet, or even tiny asteroid, offers a chance of finding out something new about countless mysteries of the universe. And so, if you wish to be in closer touch with space and our channel, we are happy to announce a new opportunity. Especially for this video, we have prepared our first NFT set on the OpenSea platform. It is three unique collector's cards of the most horrifying exoplanets, and there is only one copy of each. Also, we present a collection animation from the endings of our older videos that probably only our earliest subscribers would remember. The links and the instruction on how to take part in the auction to purchase the cards are in the description to this video. Future is in space. Let's keep in touch.